Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be restoring a Gateway G6300 desktop computer. This was released in the late 90s and it's definitely rusted as well as yellowed over the years. After a while of messing around with it I eventually got it to turn on. So let's see just what we can do with this old computer. Upon booting up the system we can see that it has a 300 MHz Pentium 2 processor as well as 256 megabytes of RAM. It also appears as if it has a SCSI card attached, which is used to connect the Tracks Data CD rewritable drive. The system is running Windows 98, which is great to see. However, something appears to be a little odd. Here's where I came across our first hurdle. A system DLL file is either corrupt or had its date changed. Luckily, there are backup copies of most important system files in the Windows folder. By pressing F8 on System Startup, we can select the command prompt. Using the directory command, we can find the problem file. The file is dated as the 1st of the 1st, 1990, meaning at some point the date of the file was changed. Looking in the System Backup folder, we can see a correctly dated version of the DLL file. To solve this issue, I renamed the problem file to get it out of the way. I then copied the correctly dated file from its original directory location to the Windows system folder. Yes, the file did indeed show up in the correct location. Windows 98 finally booted up. Things did not seem to be configured correctly though. The system didn't seem to have working drivers for the NVIDIA Reva 128 graphics card. It seemed to have drivers, but couldn't get out of 16 color mode or the resolution of 640 by 480. Either way, I took a look around the system. There appeared to be lots of MS Paint art drawings dating back to around 2002. I found the correct display driver for this system online. However, it also seemed as if the floppy drive had trouble reading a disk. My solution was to just plug in another random floppy drive I had lying around. I tried installing these drivers, however the card would just not work properly. Since I didn't have any AGP graphics cards that would fit, my next idea was to use the PCI graphics cards from my recent Windows ME computer restoration video. So out came the Nvidia card. Straight away, the S3 Verge card seemed to be detected and installed correctly. However, once the computer restarted, things weren't so great. Booting into safe mode, I was able to remove the Nvidia Reva drivers. I was now able to properly install the new graphics drivers. We could now see Windows 98 in its full color glory. There appears to be quite a few games as well as software installed on this system. For some reason it seems to be showing up as Windows Millennium Edition now, which is definitely odd. I'm going to install the 3DFX Voodoo 2 card once we've rebuilt the computer. As much as I like MS Paint art done by children, nothing can beat the classic cloud wallpaper in Windows 98. The 3D Maze screensaver also brings back so many memories. As we always do, let's grab a dab of eucalyptus oil and clean this computer up. While not overly dirty, the case has a lot of deep scratches. Using both methylated spirits as well as eucalyptus oil proved largely ineffective. I'll try my luck using some cut and polish later in the video. The side panel has a surprisingly heavy metal backplate. The top plastic panel is held on with two small Phillips head screws. Beneath the screws we can also see what colour the plastic is supposed to be. I quickly discovered that the lid is held on by several plastic clips that aren't accessible without further disassembly. By pressing in the metal clips on either side of the case, I was able to remove the front panel. Next to come out was the power supply, held in place by a total of 5 Phillips head screws. The top optical drive doesn't have a plastic front. It's interesting that a small plastic tube redirects the drive light to the correct position. With a great deal of effort, I finally detached the top plastic piece. With all the yellowed plastic removed, I gave all of the surfaces another wipe down. 
Since we've been having a lot of cloudy weather lately, it would be difficult to retro bright, aka bleach this much plastic. An easier way I thought of was just spray painting the case. I've got this ivory white spray paint that I bought from Bunnings for just over $9. So let's see if we can do it. I went through and hosed off all the plastics in an effort to get the surfaces clean to paint on. The first can of ivory white spray paint I bought actually stopped working basically straight away, so I had to get a new one. Before it failed, I learned that you're not supposed to paint things vertically as the paint will start to sag. There were several logos that I wanted to avoid getting paint on. I carefully cut around the edges of the logo to remove excess tape. I'm hoping that the tape won't damage various stickers on the case. The Gateway 2000 logo was far more challenging. I decided to cover it with blue tack. Using a ruler, I pressed it into shape as good as I could. It turns out this computer originated from Flinders University in South Australia. To try and remove the scratch markings on the case, I applied some cut and polish. Ultimately, this didn't do a whole lot. In the hot sun, I began sanding back my first failed painting attempt. Remember to always spray paint surfaces horizontally if possible. After shaking the spray can well, I began to apply the first coat. Wearing a mask is also recommended so that you don't inhale paint fumes. Painting out in the sun should also help it dry faster. I took extra care not to apply too much paint at once. The side panels of the computer had definitely yellowed the most. I'm really liking the beige colour of this spray paint. I'd say it's very close to the computer's original colour. The last few smaller pieces were all done at the same time. After two coats of paint, I'm pretty happy with the evenness. Since no one wants to watch paint dry, let's disassemble the rest of the case. Removing the rest of the drives was very straightforward. I made sure to label all of the ribbon cables before I unplugged everything. The hard disk caddy had to be unscrewed from the front of the case. With all five Phillips head screws removed, it just pops right out. This case has next to no air ventilation as it is, so I was very surprised to see most of the rear vent blocked off. The power switch, hard disk and power LEDs were last to be unplugged. The various PCI and ISA cards came out pretty easily. There is definitely a bit of rust on the back plates of the cards. It's very surprising how much some of these retro sound cards are worth. Seven Phillips head screws held the motherboard into the case. Surprisingly, there was a shiny glass pebble underneath the motherboard. How on earth that got there, I have no idea. With the case stripped down, I vacuumed up any remaining debris and dust. All of the surfaces were wiped down with methylated spirits. I also made sure to thoroughly clean any areas affected by rust before I went over them with silver paint. On the bottom of the case there is one pretty bad patch of rust. It's going to need to be sanded back and painted over. The case is missing one of its rubber feet and the other three have shifted into weird places. I'll remove them so I can repaint the bottom of the case. Taking the case outside, I began sanding back the rust with 240 grit sandpaper. Wiping off all of the powdery rust revealed a much cleaner surface. Finally, I sanded back any remaining rust with much finer 1200 grit sandpaper. I covered up the areas of the case I didn't want to get paint on. With daylight fading and the temperature quickly dropping, I gave the rusted base a few coats of silver paint. Each 250 gram can of silver spray paint was only $3.60, so I don't expect to get a very good looking finish. Several PCI card cover plates and screws were looking quite rusty, so I gave them a spray as well. The next morning I repainted the back of the computer case. I made sure to cover any areas I didn't want to get spray paint on. As the paint dried, cleaning off the internal components was my next task. This 40GB Seagate hard disk has an interesting rubber coating that I guess protects the drive from drops. The floppy drive that we were having trouble reading disk from looks to be fine on the surface. To open up the drive there are two very small Phillips head screws. Inside we can see several balls of dust, perhaps those are to blame. Either way, I sucked up all of the dust and debris that I could see. When you insert a floppy disk, this is what happens. A small motor then moves the drive head so that data can be read. The surface of the original CD drive has begun to tarnish. 
Cleaning it with some methylated spirits definitely helped. The Panasonic zip drive, which wasn't connected when I opened up this PC, has a lot of pitting on the surface. The Zip100 logo at the front leads me to believe that this accepts 100 megabyte disks. The final drive is a Trackstarter CDR4120 Pro, which is actually a CD rewritable drive. The power supply, containing the only fan in the entire system, was unsurprisingly quite dirty. I began sucking up all the loose dust that had built up on the intake fan. The rusty vent was held in place by four screws. Sliding it out revealed the very dusty fan below. Years of intaking moist and humid air likely caused the rust here. Brushing down the surface with some methylated spirits reveals just how rusty it really is. The power supply was fairly easy to open up. With the outer casing detached, I dusted the inside. I made sure to avoid touching any hazardous components. It's also good to see that none of the capacitors have leaked or expanded. This power supply is only 200 watts, which is definitely less than I expected for such a beefy old system. The other side of the fan was in need of a good dusting. Years upon years of dust have definitely started to eat away at the coating of the metal. The next step was to scrub the surfaces with methylated spirits. I tried to really get in and get the fan as clean as I could. Any areas that had rust forming I painted over, in an attempt to stop them oxidizing. With a lot of fiddling I eventually got the power supply back together. I also sanded back and spray painted the rusted intake vent. The power supply looks a whole lot better now. With the motherboard on an anti-static bag, I began to remove any built up dust. I'm very surprised by how clean the board is overall. I did also put in a new CR2032 BIOS battery. I love how awesome these old Pentium 2 processor cards look. Back in 1997, this was a very expensive CPU. The other PCI and ISA cards were also dusted off. The next step was removing the tape covering all of the labels on the back. This was surprisingly effective. The serial number sticker was somewhat damaged slightly. Peeling back the tape covering the port shield was so satisfying. It seems as if masking tape is great for stopping spray paint. Overall I'm pretty impressed how well the cheap silver spray paint worked. The last area of the case I cleaned was the bottom floor. It didn't look too dirty, but looks can be deceiving. I ended up installing new rubber feet on the base of the tower. A small amount of super glue was used to hold it in place better. The blue tack I covered the gateway logo with turned out great. There were little bits of blue tack that were hard to get out though. Surprisingly covering the logos and labels with tape worked very effectively. Now begins the reassembly, beginning with the drives. The motherboard fit easily back into the case. I tried to route the IDE cables as neatly as I could, however there just isn't a lot of space to do so. The cards also proved a little bit challenging to reinsert. After a bit of fiddling they all fit in nicely. The power supply could now be screwed back in place. The cable management definitely sucks, but I'll have to live with that. Now for the moment of truth. Does it still work? Relievingly it still booted fine into Windows 98. I installed the 3DFX Voodoo 2 drivers and began the final assembly. The metal brackets had to be screwed back onto the side panels. This has to be the heaviest door I've ever seen on a computer. This machine looks so much better now. With it all back together, let's try gaming on it to see just what this machine can do. That boot chime is simply music to my ears. First of all, I removed any old software it didn't need. It was a good time to run the disk defragmentation tool as well. A 40GB hard disk would have been a madman's dream back when this computer came out. It seemed the previous owner really enjoyed drawing things in Microsoft Paint. I'm honestly seriously considering getting some of this old MS Paint art framed. With the Voodoo 2 card properly configured, let's try playing some old games. Monster Truck Madness 2, running at 640x480, 
normal settings worked pretty well. If you've never played this game, I'd highly recommend trying it as it's lots of fun. Need for Speed 2 SE at 640 by 480, normal graphics settings runs incredibly smooth. I would not recommend driving like that in real life though. LEGO Island 2 running in high detail mode at 640x480 is playable, but a little bit choppy sometimes. Motocross Madness 2 is a lot of fun and very playable on this computer. With the detail level turned down, it runs very well, even at 640x480. Another one of my favourite games is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. This runs seemingly perfect on this system, even at 640x480 at normal settings. Something I don't understand is why it had weird slowdown issues in Quake 2. Even much simpler games such as Hover struggle and slow right down. Perhaps there are some software incompatibility issues. Regardless of that, this computer turned out great. Repainting the case and cleaning it all up has made a big difference. Look at some of the before and after shots. You can really see just how yellowed it was. I'm so glad I could save another old desktop computer. Hopefully I can find many more like this in the near future. Thank you very much for watching. If you've liked this video, definitely feel free to leave a like, and if you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.